What's up, I'm a Power Addicts crew. Today we're doing roll bar. One of the biggest questions you see scroll around the internet, will the sport bar and the family style bar interchange? In the Jeep Wrangler YJs, this sport bar right here stopped in 1991. This is a 1991 YJ. 92, they had the family style bar that came out and down. So, I have two family style bars. One came from Rust Bucket, one I picked up behind the car lot and they sold it to me and I haven't used it yet. The one that came out of Rust Buck is actually in really good shape, so I'm putting it in this one. Why am I doing that? Because I'm eventually going to change tops, and I kind of want to try the frameless tops. The only way you can run a frameless um, soft tops is to have the family style bar, so that's the reason I want to swap. I know many people prefer the sport bar, some people prefer the family, it's all up to you. So, one of the biggest questions is, will the interchange? We are going to find out today. So, if this is the first time you've gotten to Power Rack YouTube channel, be sure to subscribe. I do Jeep videos, car videos, motorcycle videos, tool videos, review videos, fabrication goodies. So, if you haven't subscribed, you might ought to do so. So, you might just learn something. Alright, everyone, let's swap some roll bars. Now, the first thing you want to do, obviously, is take the top off. If you've got a hard top, obviously, it's in the way, so you want to get it out of the way. Soft tops. If you've got, like, mine runs the best top, super top. So, I've got that frame that comes around this way. I've got it completely removed right now because what you don't want to do is be picking up your roll bar bringing it back and having one the top going across this way in your way and two risk taking the feet here of your roll bar and gouging the heck out of your top and ripping it so i've got it completely out of the way at the moment and so now t55 torques take them out now before you pull your roll bar off you want to take a couple measurements you want to take your tape, measuring tape, go to the top of your windshield frame. Yeah, I'm on. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Ah, almost made it. The heck of it is, I did this measurement just a moment ago, then I put the camera there, now I'm having to reach around the camera. So we got a dimension from the top of the windshield frame hanging it to here at the edge of the gate at 75 and a half inches. Check the other side. And come down. And we're 75 and a half inches. So what does that mean? So why does that dimension even matter? That very simple. This bar right here is known as your spreader bar. The reason it's called that, there's a set screw back here. A that allows that bar to get longer or shorter. Well, when this bar right here gets longer or shorter, what it does makes the rake of your windshield lean back further or more forward. What that does, the pitch of your door, if you got solid steel doors, the pitch of your uh, windshield rake here is going to have to match your doors. Also, even with the soft doors, even with the uh, you know, the steel, bot, steel lowers and the uh, soft uppers. Also, your hard top, from this point back to the tailgate, that's got to match obviously, otherwise your top's not going to fit correctly. It can move this point right here more forward or more backward and make your doors not line up correctly and all kinds of weird stuff. Soft tops. Further back it's right here leans, the further back the windshield leans, your top will become much more loose. The more you shove it forward, it'll make your top stretch even more, making your top tighter. So you don't want the much soft top that's perfect. I mean perfect tightness, everything. It doesn't belly in in the center or nothing. I mean, my, my soft top is perfect. So I do not want that dimension to change. But whenever I pull the roll bar and I take out the spreader bars here, the spreader bar is partially setting the windshield rake. Yes, these right here have a lot to do with holding it in place, but this right here does as well. So I wanted to take that dimension at 75 and a half inches. That's what mine is. Yours may be a little bit different. You may have to tweak yours a little bit, depending on if your top is loose or tight or whatever the case may be. But I wanted to get a baseline measurement before I pull these off so I know what I need to set it back at. Cool. Cool. 
Well, as you can see, some bolts play fair, some bolts don't. Uh, some of y'all gonna be saying you should have used an impact. Yes, well, PB Blaster, then I took him uh, the impact to it, and well, yeah, I just ripped the whole guts out of it with the impact. So now I've got not much choice, but I do have this. These right here. My buddy Wayne told me to try these out, and I've already gotten one out with this, so I'm gonna show you guys how it works. See the little teeth? Basically what you do is you put it on top of that right there, you hit it with a hammer to get to get the teeth to bite into the bolt. Then you just take your wrench and back it out. So I'm gonna set the camera on the tripod and we're gonna get the hammering. Take put your teeth on top of it. You gotta make it get a good solid bite, otherwise it'll just it'll slide right off the top of that head to the bolt. There we go. Now take your wrench. And I think it done turned loose again. Let's see what happens. Ah, she goes, yes. You can see where the top, the teeth. You can see where the teeth we got a good bite right there. So we're going to put that back in place. Give it a little bit of a tap again. I am right-handed, left-handed. I can barely wipe my nose. We got the bolt out. Now, if it gets a really, really good bite, it's kind of hard to knock that sucker out of there. So, I'll show you what I did to do that. I took my wrench here, put the round body all the way down side there, twisted this till it fit the round body tight. Make sure my corners did not line up on that hanging on the edge of the tub or any kind of other hard surface you may have available. Knock that rascal right out of there. You gotta have two on each feet in the back, which you can see one of them I've already got removed. You can have four each one of the feet behind your uh, front seats. And once you get all the bolts out that hold to the tub, you got the one that's coming out the spreader bar that goes through your windshield. T40 Torx. Take them out. Now, if everyone runs the best top super top, you've got this little bracket that goes in behind your spreader bar and your windshield. Just remember the orientation here because that's where your bar comes across the top of your door and locks in right there. Now you got your bolts for your seat belt. T47 Torx. One there, one over on the passenger. T47. Take them out. This side still had the factory little plastic cap snapped over the bolt right here. Yeah, all you got to do is take your screwdriver, get in behind this right here, and wedge it and pop it right off. Now do yourself a huge favor, get you a 3 8 16, and I'll show you the size right here. 3 8 16 chasing tap, not a thread cutting tap, but a chasing tap. Now you can use a thread cutter too. The thread cutting taps are a little bit bigger, so they actually, because they're designed to cut uh, threads. These right here are designed to do nothing more than just clean your threads. If you had anything boogered up or you got rust in them in this case, so a chasing tap is what you really should use in chasing all the holes to be sure your bolts go back in in a very easily manner. Look at all the junk coming out of the threads at them holes. Yuck! The mystery has been solved. Will the sport bar and the family bar interchange? Well, absolutely it will, but there are a few little catches to this, okay? Here's what you gotta do. You may get lucky and it drop right in, but what you really should do is prevent yourself from having any headaches. These holes right here, elongate them downward. These two right here went okay. I twisted the head off that bolt, and that bolt went in okay. And like I said, from the chasing of the, the, uh, the tap, the chase of threads, three sixteenths volts. Right here, that bolt right there will not go in. This plate is kind of riding up a little bit, so what I suggest you do 
is take those bolts right there and get you some uh, router bit, uh, like those carbide cutter bits from metal, cut them downward, or get you uh, like a round uh, rat tail file or a chainsaw file and file it out and elongate that downward by at least an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths or so, but at least an eighth of an inch bringing it down. That will give your bolts room right there for them to go in. Um, next time I'm up my dad's, I'm going to get his carbide cutter bits on his air air routers and cut that out a little bit and get that bolt in there. So, But those right there went in no problem. That right there, and it's kind of tight. That one said, ah, not, not going to happen. So elongate your holes downward. Okay, I still got to put my seat belts in. My soft top. I got a uh, best top, super top. That bow right there, as it swings backwards to here, it's close. It cuts it really tight, but it clears. The bow that goes across the back right here that shoots up this way that tightens the top, it clears, but it's tight. It's it's close fit, but it works. Uh, rear seat belts, I'm going to go junkyard hopping and rob me some probably out of an S10. Okay, I'm going to come over and show you guys what I'm talking about, get you a little close-up detail. If you look real close, you see how this hole right here Back inside there, you see the hole where the bolt goes in. They're kind of a little bit out of line. This right here needs to be cut downward just a little bit. I mean, cut downward like down this way and up like that. Kind of make it oval shaped going downward. That would give you clearance for your bolts to do what they need to do. Just for precautionary measures, if you swap your bars out, do that ahead of time and you should be good to go. The other side was just as easy as it can be. This side over here is being cranky. So, yeah. Get your rat tail file or air cutter or dremel tool whatever cut that down about i don't know maybe eighth of an inch and you should be good to go do both sides just give yourself a uh, less chance of headache looky there looky there we got the family style bar so if you enjoyed that video hit me that thumbs up subscribe if you haven't leave me some cool comments or even questions down below so remember everyone, if you see a question down below and I haven't made, I haven't uh, had the opportunity to answer the question yet, feel free to jump in and answer the question if you know the answer. So that way it will kind of help run this YouTube channel like a community. We help everyone out. That's what Jeep and people do. Heck, that's what we all should do no matter what you drive. I mean, yeah, i got my Jeeps, but I've also got motorcycles, I've got a Mustang, I've got a Bronco. I've got a lot of cars I'm really into. So, you know, try to help anyone and everyone out. So be sure to answer those questions, subscribe, and so one other way you can help out too is to share these videos out. Therefore, if you put them on the, your Jeep forums, Facebook, Twitter, or even uh, Reddit or whatever it is social media you happen to use, sp spread the word out because that helps everyone out, okay? I create the videos, you guys share them out there, it helps everyone, cool? Alright, appreciate you guys hanging out with me, peace out, later y'all.